Hi everyone, welcome back to another video by K21 Academy and today we have an exciting topic to discuss that is PL300 exam preparation. As you may already know, PL300 is a certification offered by Microsoft for individuals who want to demonstrate their expertise in Power Platform Solution Implementation. This exam is designed to test your knowledge of various Power Platform concepts including Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI and Dataverse. In today's video, our expert will be discussing some of the best practices for PL300 exam preparation including study materials, practice exams and exam taking strategies. So stick to it and watch the video till the end. This is how the question allocation is going to be. Prepare the data will be 25 to 30 percent. Model the data that goes to visualize and analyze the data 25 to 30 percent. Uh, deploy and maintain the assets 15 to 20 percent. As you can see right here, 15 to 20%. And then after that, gradually we have uh, deploy and maintain assets 15 to 20% here as well. The general strategies is about, you need to read both the question and answer in full one time through. You need to identify features which were mentioned in the answer. And you need to identify the text in the question that implies features like business and then technical requirements for modeling, visualizing and analyzing the data with Power BI. I'm requesting everyone to please pay a full attention to qualifying clauses, right? In the most cost effective way that will best fulfill these clauses may eliminate certain answers as well. You can eliminate obviously wrong answers to narrow the selection of the right answers as well. That's our first domain. As you all know that we will be able to read the data from different type of data sources. It can be your SharePoint. It can be your Microsoft SQL Server, Excel, Cosmos DB or Azure Analysis Server cubes as well. So we will be able to use any of these particular queries, these cubes to uh, like get the data and we can use Power Query to do the modifications, to do the changes, to make the changes actually. So you can <clears throat> easily be able to find out the these very important resources and approaches which is there. Then we have discussed about that, how we can get data from different type of data sources. We have learned about that. And you guys have also seen these are the multiple options which is there. Now, what type of question you think you are going to get? So now the question is select all the possible data sources that are possible to connect with through the get data option in Power BI desktop. Power BI data flows, CSV and Excel uh, files stored on the machine, on-premises database or Azure database via direct query. So the answer is B actually, because the question is select all the possible data sources that are possible to connect with through the get data option in the Power BI desktop. Power BI data flows, CSV Excel files, on-premises database, and then Azure SQL data via direct query as well. So they are talking about directly from the get data option. So whenever you will go to your Power BI, and when you will click on this get data, CSV and uh, Excel file are those, right? Which you click on that, you can directly get it from the files and all those operations there. But yeah, you can consider C and D also as an correct answer for this. So I mean, I think it's, uh, it's correct. Yeah. Second question. For the query opened in the Power Query Editor, you are interested in finding out the percentage of empty cells or values in each column as soon as possible, which of the following data preview options would you select? Column profiling, show white spaces, column quality, or column distribution. So what do you think will be the correct answer for this question? So the correct answer here is, and for this question A is C, column quality is the one. So these are just a quick sample questions. Second domain is about modeling the data. So here we have discussed about that, uh, like whenever a user look for, uh, or they see the small or the uh, lesser, uh, like uh, tables, fewer tables, they enjoy your data model considerably more. So a simple table structure will be simple to navigate because of column and table properties that are specific and user friendly. They have merged or appended tables to simplify the tables within your structure and have good quality relationship. So this is how you can configure data model and build the relationship. 
So you have already retrieved your data, cleaned it in Power Query. Now we will go for the modeling tab where the data model is located. And then we can go for the relationship. So relationship always be available on your modeling tab. So when you will go to your modeling tab, inside the modeling tab, we have the option for manage relationship. So from there, we will be able to manage the relationship. Then how we can create a common date table. So here we have discussed about the common date table by using my calendar formula, right? There are two ways, either calendar auto or calendar. If you will use calendar, you are actually going to create a Gregorian calendar, right? But if you are going to use other option, which is there, so definitely it is going to be your uh, calendar auto, which is for the fiscal year initially. Then I have year, month, num, week, num, day of the week. And this is how your output is going to be presented to you, right? Some sample questions for this. You are interested in creating a measure that will always calculate the total sales for 2020, irrespective of the year selected in any other visual in Power BI. Which option is correct about this table? Total sales for 2020, calculate some sales order details, total price, year, sales order details, order date equals to 2020. That's my second option. And that's my third option and that's the th fourth option second option total sales is sum of calculate sales order details total price comma year sales order details order date equals to 2020 then total sales for 2020 total sum sales order details total price year sales order details order date equals to 2020 and it is not possible to create such a measure so what do you think will be the correct answer for this all right. So the correct answer is for this question is your A. Then you will have the third domain, which is about visualizing and analyzing the data. Right. And at this point, we will going to discuss about how to select fields to create visualizations. That's how you create. You just need to select a column and then they will show you the visualization. So now changing the default visualization type, if by default, you do have a tabular model but you will be able to use different type of visuals by just selecting a specific image from this particular location. And then it is definitely going to get your work done. These are the different type of visuals, right? These are different type of visuals. If you are going to work with, right? Like pie chart and all, we can also use a Python visual as well, right? Python visuals are initially be used for the purpose of Python programming. So if you know how to write a Python programming, you can create the Python visuals very easily. That's then another option you will have here. Some of the questions, which of the following statement are true regarding slicer visual in a Power BI report? The first option, you can configure the visual based on the date column to utilize slider controls. Second option, while adding a field to the field of a slicer visual, we can use either a measure or a column. A slicer visual from the report can be pinned to a dashboard for making the dashboard interactive, all of the above. So what do you think will be the correct answer for this question about the slicer? So the correct answer for this question is your, it's A actually. You can configure the slicer visual based on the date column to utilize slicer control as well, right? Then. The next important domain is about your deploy and maintain assets. 15 to 20% of your information is going to be there. Here we will have, we have already covered how to configure the row level with static method and dynamic method, right? We have seen it practically when it is a static method, then you will go to the manage roles and you will statically create it and provide a value manually. But when you will go with the dynamic method, you will use a user principle name function. And with the help of this name function, you can easily be able to create a dynamic row level security. Well, some of the questions are like, here is the list of configuration steps given in improper sequence for row level security. So now you need to get the, or you need to arrange it in a correct sequence. This type of questions are known as your drag and drop, drag and drop. All right. So the correct answer here is the sequence that will be followed is A, B, C, E, D, F. This is A, B, C, E, D, E, D, F. First, we need to create a report in Microsoft Power BI. Then I will create a role level security using DAX. Then I will test the role level roles in Power BI. 
then we can deploy the report to Microsoft Power BI service and I can test the role in again Power BI service. And then finally, add members to the role in the Power BI service. So they have just given you some step-by-step -step implementation, right? You need to do the drag and drop in the exam questions. Which of the following option is not a privacy level in Power BI desktop? Private, public, organizational, and confidential. All right. So the correct answer for this question is confidential. It's not a part of privacy level. Privacy level have only three options, private, public, and organizational. Then the exam. So you have uh, your own choice. Either you want to, if you want to give it from the uh, test center. So test and centers uh, can staff greets you in the lobby. Two forms of ID required. First would be the government issued ID with the photo. You must empty your pockets and lock your personal contents up. You are escorted to a test center, PC to electronically take the test. And you need to sign a non-disclosure element before taking the test as well. But if you are giving it from your office or maybe home, so this is proctored remotely via video streaming, uh, audio, video, and screen sharing feeds. The screen sharing feed allows proctors to view candidates' desktop, including all monitors. And the audio, video, and screen sharing feeds will be stored for a limited period of time in the event of their subsequent need for the review purpose as well. Then these are the mechanics for it. Question are of the following types, multiple choice, yes, no, drag, drop, and fill in the blanks. You can, uh, you don't leave a single question because there is no negative marking. So there is no penalty for guessing actually. So you have 180 minutes to complete the exam. You can mark a question for future consideration as well. And before submitting the exam, you can review all your answers and which questions you walk, <laughs> you mark so that you can uh, like go back to them easily. And then, but remember, the questions with yes and no, they are not uh, like uh, reviewable. So once you have give the answer for one question and you move to the next question, then you will never ever be able to go back to the previous questions there. Passing score will be 700. That's how you just need to uh, get the marks. So guys, this was our expert from Team K21 Academy. And if in case you missed upon any concepts or if you want to have a deeper dive, then we have something really, really amazing for you. We have our free class on Microsoft Power BI Data Analyst Certification for Beginners. You just have to visit k21academy.com forward slash pl300 and you'll be seeing this kind of interface. Just click on book your free seat now. Select an event date according to your availability. Enter your name, your email address, your phone number and click on yes, save my seat. Moving ahead, you'll be seeing this kind of link on the extreme right. Save that link, add it to your calendars and I'll see you in the free class. Till then, keep learning.